Okay, so today what I want to do is to have a look at the data pools. Right now what I have for data pools, the uses of a data pool that I have is to tie a uh, number of sets of data, which are typically structures, to an ID type, which in typically is the case of an entity ID for like the ECS, the entity component system. So if I roll on down to here, for the armature state, I have a pool for this, which ties in an entity ID with the faux armature state type. I have down here, the same thing for the render state, right? I have a number of uh, what is effectively component pools that I then pull into, which then turn into a name, the render state pool, which I then pass into the rent systems, and those systems access these data via that. Now, there's a number of issues that I'm not entirely happy with this data pool. First off, it's entire, it's almost exclusively the C++, unless I was to do some kind of weird macro where I have like the the the, the class functions, kind of like have like a wrapper around them to make them FFI compatible. But that's a bit painful, especially if you want to use things directly from C or directly from um, Rust or something like that. Some other language makes it quite a bit painful. Um, another issue is the fact that uh, hilariously, because this is possible, because of the templated uh, nature and how this is instantiates if there's any improvements to the, the data pool like implementation up here in uh, the bow that does not translate down into like if if I compile this in a in a downstream library such as in position or physics and then I make an improvement to this and I don't recompile those those are still going to run around with the old implementation which may be worse may have a bug whatever that's a bit of a problem well i mean it's not so much of a problem in this case but like it once you start having things like plugins external dealing with external devs and them using try getting trying to get them to recompile things every time you update the core that's a bit more of a pain so i want to try to move away from having to have like it be instantiated uh, the implementation being instantiated on a per library basis. What I want to be able to do is more like in C where you have like a common interface with implementations in the back one time. And then like every downstream library can just call back into that and automatically get any improvements, any bug fixes in that without having to recompile downstream projects, libraries, whatever. And third is the fact that because it is a C++ instantiated type, there is the classic case, which, you know, I know most people t say, you know, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. The fact that each instantiation <clears throat> is, well, literally another set of code. So like you have code duplication for um, even minorly different types. So perhaps it'd be best if I give a good example of this straight up. So. If I, okay, let me actually bring up God Bolt. Make sure I got, okay, ba, 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 here we go. So I got some old, some stuff I was doing. I got one source and two source, uh, MSVC, GCC, and Clang 15. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> we'll start with, uh, I'll keep a second one so I can do a, a um, like this was for something else, but uh, I'll keep the second source so I can actually do like at the end of this, a comparison between the two. But for the moment, let me put that off to the side here. Uh, let's do a multi-allocation. I'm going to give an example of what's going on with the instantiation. So I can put that in there. That's great. And then I need the data pool itself. It's this. And at the bottom there. Uh, the implementation, put that at the bottom of that. Mm, do I need anything else? I don't really think so. Um, <clears throat> okay, let's see. We got a little bit of a bug here. Uh, including that directly. That's fine. Uh, that's the same thing going on there. Uh, uh, algorithm and data pool. Okay, algorithm. What do I use that for? I use that. I have a custom unique, don't I? Which will be here. Yes. Okay, I need to gra grab that. Algorithm unique. 
I have two, don't I? Remove duplicates, unique and unique. I need this one with the uh, binary predicate. So let's copy that in. Let's uh, put that here. So I'll get rid of the foe from that. So that's okay. Okay, <clears throat> and then I want to instantiate one of these things. So I do type def class uh, test one, which is a foe data pool of int, and let's say int, like just something like that. How do I instantiate one of these things? Render state pool. That looks about right. Type def that that. Oh, do I have it the other way around? Yeah, I did. Okay. <clears throat> no assembly to display. Really? Hmm. Uh, I'm missing something. Oh, do I have to do something like template this? No. <clears throat> okay, this is rather embarrassing. How do I get this to work? Hold on a second. Let me BRB. Okay, there we go. It works. Template class, blah, 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 blah. So, on GCC 12.2, uh, this whole thing comes out to, this is optimized, he's 17, optimized, optimized, optimized. Okay, great. This whole thing comes out to about 1,300 lines of um, assembly, or 1,400. Uh, about 2,000 on Clang, and about 1,921. Now, <clears throat> if I was to make basically another, a second instantiation, now there's going to be probably some code sharing, but... I'm going to bet it's not going to be too much. In like if I just do unsigned, in so they'll be both basically the same size. It's just one signs, one is not. So it goes from like fourteen hundred to twenty six hundred, two thousand to <clears throat> near four uh, about four thousand thirty nine hundred thirty eight hundred lines. And again, same thing on MSVC. Every instantiation I have puts basically a full copy of this almost into every single downstream library. Every data pool is going to have its own set of basically the exact same code, even if like the changes are very minor. I want to be able to avoid that. I'll basically want to have them all call back to, the, again, the one instantiation, the one implementation that can be bug fixed and updated. And so you downstream can get, um, can take advantage, advantage of that. And I don't have code. I don't want to say code bloat, but I don't want to have code duplication across many libraries when I can actually like be able to uh, um, take advantage of like better caching if the same code section is used across multiple things instead of having literally multiple different versions of what is effectively the same 99% the same thing like this this is the same code basically so let's put that off to there so I don't have to look at it, it anymore I want to make a improvement, like I said, and that is going to be consolidating into a C implementation, which is going to be a bit more dynamic with uh, how it does things. So to begin with, first off, I don't want the data pool. I don't want to necessarily call it a, a generic data pool anymore. I want to actually make tied into the ECS a lot more because this is going to be, this is, this is basically the component the component pool storage kind of mechanism so I'm gonna do I'm gonna just call it that the component pool not double a not double dot component pool H let's grab that let's make this 2023 that's great if and that oh yes yes component pool H Wow, I cannot type D, fine. And if that. So handle H. 
info result. Uh, I need the ID type. Anything else? Oh, export. Right. Oh, and if and def for C. Yes, yes. That and this. So, of course, I need the basic type itself. So, the fine handle for ECF component tool and creation. I'm exporting this type for result set. OECS create component pool. Uh, for the moment, I'm just going to do OECS component pool star p component pool, something like that. And to destroy it as well, I imagine. OECS destroy component pool. Takes that. Does that. Um, what other basic things do I basically use for this data pool? I can just basically copy. Maintenance. I need to be able to do maintenance. That's a big one. On a pool um, maintenance. So a number of other things that I'm going to do to make the I like one thing I also really want to do is try to reduce this larger kind of interface, the different types of functions, like especially for access down into something quite a bit smaller, a smaller interface, more easy to manage in one's mind. You know, I'll give you more basic building blocks than all this, like a sequential binary find search. You can do that outside, depending on how you want to do things. And what algorithms you you can use a custom algorithm basically is what I'm saying. All right, and otherwise I'm sure this is going to be fine and dandy. This will be improved. Okay. Ah, so let's get the source side. Um, alt CPP for now, so that I have access to. Uh, the easier atomic mutexes, whatever. Synchronization primitives. Okay, so there's a source, there's this. Okay. Include. Pro ECS component pool. Put that new line. Namespace. <clears throat> this is going to be. So I got struct component pool. Which is going to be whatever, and it's going to go fo define handle um, as handle fo define handle cast. There we go. Component pool or component pool to the external type, which is the fo ECS version of that. So, <clears throat> going to have a number of things. First off, let's just. Functions, functions, functions. So it's going to be quite similar to this. I'm going to have pool store. Uh, let's call it like a data set. Uh, stored data, like that. Um, I'm going to have, uh, I need to include mutex for this. To insert data, which is... Do insert sync. I need a data set for the two insert data. Uh, I'm going to the inserted data, which is <clears throat> offsets. Yes. To insert. Or, yeah, I'll keep that. Um, but I will change it down to size T inserted capacity. Size T inserted count and size t star um, p inserted offsets like that 
I need struct for the data set type. Size T of capacity of a data set. Count the number of items in that uh, thing. Oh, and the the ID. And finally, instead of like this old type, which would have a pool store, which is uh, specific to a type, this is just, just this is just going to be a large, a you know predefined or um, generic memory, just a generic chunk of memory, which I'll you know, p data, which would be like that. That's how this is going to roll. And how much I allocate is going to be based on other size p data size, something like this. Oh, and I need to, if that's the case, I need to have that passed in. The, data, the, the size of each data, of each whatever the component is, that needs to be passed in. Um... To remove, so that's um, to remove sync, much like before. Data, uh, sorry, not that standard for O and DID. To remove IDs. Um. Move data, which is go just going to be data set removed data <clears throat> like that. I think. Is there anything else I can think of at the moment? Um, not really. Okay, let's that together. Inserted. Regular data, other. Okay, that's the basic uh, gist. Uh, oh, I need the alloc data set. I need to build the ability to easily star p data set. Freeing data. So just free p data set, p data, and free p data set, the IDs. And then I need the ability to allocate, which would be what? A Boolean, I think? Return true, false, whether or not you actually allocated. Yeah. Um, which requires... I need to pass in the, the size of the data. So data size. Data set star. P data set. Oh, and of course... Capacity. I need that. Uh, which should be simple enough, because what's going to happen is you get in, be a data set, data set, equals a bunch of uh, some stuff, where dot capacity equals capacity, dot pids equals malloc. Calloc, hold on. Do I need to, do I want to zero the data or the memory? No, I don't actually care. No, because I'm just, it'll be, it's just raw memory and then I'm just going to copy data in. I don't actually need to like clear it or anything that I can think of. So it'd be capacity times size of oh, entity ID. Um, this needs to be, this is C++, so oh, entity ID star. data equals mal of capacity times data size. Then I need to do a check, you know, make sure it's all allocated. So if new data set dot equals null or if either of these fail to uh, allocate to malloc, then I need to the alloc just in case like one did and one one succeeded and one didn't, they both need to succeed. So if either of them failed, then I need to make sure that it, it was otherwise deallocated. So dealloc and new data set. 
and return false. Otherwise, p dataset equals new dataset, and I need to return true. So that's that. This, okay. Now, of course, I need to create and destroy, and then I need to get into the real meat of this. <clears throat> so, uh, component pool, start the new component pool, equals, okay, do I want to do C++ new or not? No, because if I do new, then these things are going to be random data. But mutex and vector will be created correctly. So what I what I need or want to do is I'm going to malloc the data size, which is size of component pool. Oh, stop trying to put P on it. Okay. Check if it actually happened or not. If equals null, then I need to return. Ooh. Turn the result of is this even like I don't think this actually uses my type return types. No, it doesn't. Okay, cool. Uh po ECS error out of memory. Star p component pool equals component pool to handle of e new component pool turn to pro result of pro ECS success. Now I created it and it exists. Now I need to initialize. That is to say, mem set of p new component pools. I need to make sure it's all zeroed. Size of component pool. What is under C standard lib? No, it'd be C string. All the memory stuff is in C string for whatever reason, for whatever legacy reason. And then I want now I want to so the entire structure is zeroed. Now I want to initialize just the C plus plus bits, which means I need to do new at this location. Um, sorry, this location. Uh, component pool like that and then p new component pool uh, data size equals data size initialize yeah like that okay whatever and then on the other side on for uh, for freeing so We turn that into a local, the, the internal type, and then I need to call P component pool. I need to call the C plus plus constructor. I even need this, or is it just, no, yeah, I need it. Uh, free P component pool. Oh, and I need to deallocate. Datasets, which means uh, dialog key uh, address of the component pool remove data to insert data and stored data, and I need to free the component pool key inserted offsets. I got all that. free deallocate deinitialize mm. so let's make sure that's just not gonna die immediately that's great that's great okay 
<sighs> so at this point, I need to get the basically the do to do the maintenance, which is the big uh, thing for this to exist in the first place. I need to be able to insert. I need to remove data. So let's do that. Uh, so I got the maintenance there. Oh, ECS X4. Do I want to ECS? Do I want to do a return to? Yeah, fo result set of uh, fo ECS and then pool insert for the moment. The fo ECS component pool component pool. It's going to bring in fo entity ID entity. And void star the data, the raw data. I already know or should know the data size from this, so that's already in the pool. And then I just need to remove that turn result set. Yeah. To insert and to remove. So, let's uh, get this in place. That's going to be there. And then grab these two, put them into place. All right. Let's copy this completely. Uh, so P component pool to remove sync. I need to lock that up. And I also need to unlock it afterwards. Uh, I will always just return to pro resolve fully CSFS. Great. And then I need to do P component pool to remove ID, start in place, back. The entity. Is that it? One, two, three. Yeah, that should be it. Uh, insertions, which is the actual more interesting thing. So, grab this. Let's do a more interesting standard unique lock, I think. Shared lock, unique lock. Which is P component, is it? Yeah. Of uh, two insert sync. Because this could fail in more than one way, I think. So first of all, I need to check if I need e capacity equals zero. Okay, that's something I need to do probably. Pro No. If the component uh, pool to insert data dot capacity is less than yeah less than the p component pool to insert data dot count plus one. Then I need to just, I just, yeah, I need a new data set, data set, new data set, no, just data set equals blank. Does it actually matter? No, it does not. Does it? No. If not alloc data set alloc, which is going to be this plus one for the moment. The data size and the that if that fails, then I can return to pro result pro uh, ECS error 
out of memory. I do that. Otherwise, I would have to, okay, and now I need a function to move the data from it from a data set to another. Or uh yeah. <clears throat> hmm. I should have that in here, right? Multi-delete, multi-move. Oh, here we go. Multi-move. So it's source, source, okay, I can change that to destination, destination source count. That'll make more sense. And, okay. Move data. Data set, star P, destination set. Destination offset. The data set star p source set and size the source offset. So, like in the old one, the offset into the destination, offset into that, and size t count. Ooh, right. And oh, data size. I need that as well nowadays. That should. Be pretty simple because I can just do mem move copy move copy uh, move takes into account possible overlapping data and then does it in reverse. So I need to do move move um, destination sets IDs plus destination offset the source set the IDs plus source. And then the amount of data is count time size of pro and DID. Simple enough. And then mem move for P destination set data um, is what? Byte size. Of that, I think, no, plus destination offset times data size. Same thing for source. Times the count times data size, like that. Let's make sure this is super obvious. And that should be it. That's, I mean, yeah, that would be it. Okay. So what's I doing? Moving. Data, okay, I had to move all the old original data. So that'd be what? Just from zero, I guess. So <clears throat> to the new data set, zero from the to insert data. Starting from zero to, and it would be the what's already in there. So p component pool uh, to insert data dot count uh, data size being component pool data size like that. Pointer of that. Okay. The allocate the other one, the old one. And then swap it in some new data. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, count equals p component pool count equals the old count. That transfers. And then we do p component pool uh, to insert data equals data set. Like that. 
then mm -hmm. I need to actually add the data, don't I? Phone a pool to insert data of PIDs. Which would be like P component pool. Count equals entity, and then I need to do like mem. This can be a mem copy. So mem copy into p. We'll do insert data dot p data. P u int per byte of this plus. Times p on pool data size from p data to and it's just data size. So that copies the data from here into here. Anything else I can think of? Not really. And then so I just need to increment the count in here. And then return. So that's the basics. Now I need to actually do the maintenance. Uh, do do? Multi delete, single in place, bunch of stuff, bunch of stuff, bunch of stuff. So we got, we do remove, we clear remove, we clear inserted, then we do the remove pass, then we do the insert pass. So, first thing will be to just do here old data, which is to say p component. Okay, I need the component pool. Need that. Uh, to remove? No, to uh, the remove data. Dot count. Need that. Uh, if that equals zero, rem inserted count also is reset to zero. Simple. Then I need to do the remove pass and the insert pass. So ho result set result equals remove pass of just pass it in directly. If it didn't succeed, then return that. Otherwise, we then do result equals insert pass. And then return, just return that actually. Or just, yeah, no, result equals that, return result. Make things a bit more readable. Right. So, moving on up to here, I got the move data. So I need to do, sorry, oh, result set remove pass. This is going to be very, very close, if not identical, to this one. Which is still pretty readable. So let me d double check. I lock it up, I get what's to be removed, unlock it so that you can start adding things to be removed to the pool. While I'm doing, while I'm processing all this, so if there's nothing to remove, leave. IDs are sorted. I remove, I, I just go through, right? Remove store capacity equals the number of, up to the maximum number to remove. And then I just go through from start to beginning to end. As long as I have either not reached the end of the main pool or I haven't reached the end of the eye of the items to remove, I just iterate further and further through 
If I find it, I move the data out from the main storage, put it into the remove storage. I remove all objects from that were not removed down. So as I move left to right, am I moving left to right? Yes. As I'm moving up, left to right, or in my case, left to right means like in an increasing order. Once I've removed something, then I take everything between the last removed and this removed, and I shift it to the left, as many items as required. So that everything is shifted. So rather than like doing it, like when I do like um, in regular standard vectors, where if you remove something, it moves everything to the right down. And if you do that multiple times, everything is shifted up to multiple, you know, n times. I just go through once and I shift everything ma most once at most. Whether it's being moved to the removed pool or being shifted to uh, shifted to the left in the maker in the regular pool. Otherwise, I increment, and then I move out here. If there's anything I haven't moved at the end, I shift that, and then I yeah, the number of stored is room. Okay, decremented. So still makes sense after all this time. P component pool. Yeah. Okay, I don't need to do that in this case. I just peek upon a pool to remove think dot lock. Um to remove IDs equals standard I'm just gonna move this peek upon a pool. Uh to remove IDs. that great if to remove ids dot empty return that right away early exit sort i'll do this in c plus plus one include l algorithm Do that, okay. I need to do the thing where I need to reallocate larger data sets. So if removed data capacity is less than this size, then I need to do Allocate a new one, which is this size. That data set into that data set to remove. Okay, I don't I don't need to move old data. I don't need to do that. I just need to allocate it. Deallocate the old one. That's it. Oh no. And swap the data in. No, 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 no. I can do this smarter. I can do this. I could just deallocate and then try to reallocate the new one. Uh, yeah, I could just do that. <sighs> and then I oh, the ID. Const star no just star const the start id equals t component pool store data dot pids no this would be hold on this is a const this is a const as well 
start id plus p component pool stored dot count and then i need um Okay, we'll do that. Or we'll, we'll do it the other way around. That. We access that once. We pass this in equals that. Great. And to remove. To remove IDs dot data, I think it was. So entity ID const star const e and remove ID equals e remove ID plus to remove ID dot size. Okay, great. That's basically the end. Now we go through. Oh, right. Size the remove count since they may not actually match. Um, and size T. Last moved object. Offset. 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 Yeah. So now we launch into this. So while E and ID. And t remove id not equal t and remove id. We're gonna do yeah. If star p id less than star p remove id. Uh, plus plus p id. And then continue. So we get a really tight loop here. Where we basically have to jump back up. Otherwise, if they match T we want to move the removed entry out. So the offset PID minus P start ID. Move data is going to be into the P component pool. Remove data. The destination offset, which is the what? Remove count. Store data. So it's coming from here, and it's from this offset, uh, but count of one and data size. Okay. Then I need to do like if last move equals zero. Wait, would it be not equal zero? Right, because those objects down to zero don't need to be moved at all. So I can, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just move, so if it's, yeah. Move data, so this will be the first. So this is only going to be entered if it's not the first object being moved or removed. So end the component pool stored data. Last moved object offset minus move count. If I got that right, yeah. Um, store data offset minus last moved offset. And data size. No, not quite. That, that, that. 
Oh, the Count. Wait, no, that wasn't the Count? The source. Starting from the source. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From, there we go. The source. Which is starting at that location to move them to the left. Which would be that minus the removed count. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm shifting things. Yeah, yeah. The ID is incremented. The remove ID is incremented. Um... Moved count is incremented, and last moved object equals offset plus one. Otherwise, this means p remove ID is greater than PID, I think. No. No. P I if this is less, we do that. Otherwise we've matched it. Otherwise it just doesn't exist. PID is greater than, so we just say p removed ID. Like this, right? Yes, logic is, logic is all still there. So we do that a whole bunch of times, and then at the end we do like if last move offset not equal to zero. Then we move data. This is basically this again. Except instead of that, it's from the count stored data to the end. So to the end minus that. Data type size last moved offset. My moved count shift to the left. Yes. Then we just clean up. We just have to do the component pool where we say, you know, store data count. This equals remove count. And the remove data dot count equals remove count. And then we're out. Great. So that's removing, I hope. That just leaves the insertions. So, to insert, which is not quite here. Yeah, here it is. A bit more involved. Ah, okay, let me look through the logic for this again, so if I can recall it correctly. Same thing as earlier, I get the items to be inserted. I move them, move the data pool around in this case. If there's nothing there, leave early. Otherwise, I need to sort, remove uniques. Sorry, not remove uniques, uh, remove duplicates. And use the last unique instead of the first. That's why I have this uh, custom one. Because this is grabbing the last unique, not the first unique. Like the one that uh, regular algorithm uses. Um, I need to insert the um, offset size needs to be reserved to the that size. That's correct. Then I need to find out the offsets to where I need the source. Okay, so I have two sets of offsets. The offset in the to insert array of the data I'm to insert, and then the actual destination it's going to be in the new in the in the regular storage array. I figure that out here. Then, I mean, if there's nothing to actually insert, I leave. Otherwise, I need to possibly resize, and then I need to actually put the stuff in in reverse order so that I shift things to the right as much as I require, which is going to be the number two move. Accumulated distance, which is that. Yeah, there we go. As I move backwards in memory, moving things in as required with a final. Oh, and yeah, if it's a new storage medium, then I need to shift the remaining old stuff in and then I'm out. Then I, well, almost out because I need to process the uh, offsets, insert offsets for public consumption. Then I'm out.
Okay, let me grab a quick drink and BRB. Okay, uh, right, P component pool to insert uh, sync. Grab that data. To insert sync to unlock. Uh, I need to say data set to insert data set equals. Yeah, it would just be, um, yeah, it just would be, wouldn't it? To insert equals P component pool, just grab the to insert data and we just say, hey, you know, the um, component pool to insert data is blanked out like that. Great. If to insert data set dot count is zero, then we just leave. Do I do anything? I need to, oh, I do need to deallocate the set. Deallocate the data set, which is to insert data set. I may have allocated something, but I don't actually need whatever. So, pull result, pull ECF success, great. Otherwise, I need to sort the data. I need to, okay. So it's going to be in the data set, but it's going to be unorganized. So how do I do it here? I create this, okay. Let me create my own type for this. So got that, I need a struct. Insert offset data like that, which is going to be size T source offset, uh, size T destination offset. Do I need, do I want the ST ID as well? Just keep it local or just not? I would need it so I can sort it. Like this. I need, yeah. Hmm. So what I need to do is I need to create the <clears throat> a vector, I guess. Insert offset data. Reserve uh, to insert data set dot count. And what I need to do is okay. Insert offset processing is going to be what I'm going to do is I'm going to have flow and the ID star P ID equals P component pool. Uh, sorry, not P component pool to insert data set dot P IDs. Oh, and the ID. Const star p const actually as well. I want to make sure this is const. I'm not change. I'm not touching this stuff. ID insert our p id plus two insert data set dot count. I need to go through all these four four yeah four p id not equal p end id plus plus PID. Zero, like that. And then I need to plus plus I, that. Two, insert offsets dot in place back. Set data, where the dot, entity equals 
star PID dot source offset equals I. And then we're done. The destination offset doesn't matter, does it? Not, I, I don't know it yet. Do all that, and then I need to sort it. So, how do I do this? To insert offsets. To insert offsets start begin. To insert offsets start end. I'm going to have to give it a predicate to work off, so that. Data, offset data const and a const and b while turn a dot entity is less than b dot entity okay and then I need to find out the and algorithm i need to get rid of duplicates so do, 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 do. equals oh unique last Do this, basically the exact same thing as this, but would it be A, B? No, it's just, it just checks that they're equal. Uh, I'm missing something, aren't I? One, two, three, okay. Okay, we do that, and then I need to erase, insert offsets, not erase those from this point to the end. Or is there another way I can do this? I don't know. Hmm, if, hmm, no, no, I'll, I'll do it this way. Okay, so at this point, now I need to go ahead and do the um, actual find out the destinations, destination offsets for all these things. So, uh, insert offset data, ta, star P insert. Okay, can I please insert offset data const star const the end insert equals e insert plus to insert offsets dot size. Okay. Then I need These will be const actually equals p to uh, p component pool storage of pids. To figure out the offset, I need to have the star id equals. End ID equals P ID, P start ID plus store data dot count, which is the current count, okay?
number that will be inserted. Because it's still going to be... So this is only removing duplicates of those to be inserted. I still need to actually... There still may be a difference of those that already the ah, already exist in there. And I'm not... I don't overwrite what's already in there. So. While the insert... E and the insert. Or rather, four. I'll do a. F do I. I don't know if I do, actually. So just, yeah, I leave it as a while loop. PID equals. You know what? Lower bound. Let's do this. Uh, PID to the end ID. Of e insert entity. Looking for that. If P ID not equal P and ID. And star P ID equals P insert entity. Yes, yes. P insert. No, hold on. If I reach the end. Okay, yeah, I haven't reached the end. Sorry. I haven't reached the end and it's correct. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I'm, uh, yeah. Yeah, how do I set this to just not? This already, okay, I'm sorry, my, my mind is just, I've hit a case where the entity already, the component data already exists. In that case, P insert, I'll just say like entity equals, uh, sorry, not equals, equals foe invalid ID. If I reach this when I'm trying to do an insert, that means it's not valid, so do not insert. And then we move on. Whoop, sorry. And we increment past it, we continue on. Right. Uh, what was the other case? Otherwise, I'm at the location right now. It's not inside of here, so I need to add it. So P insert uh, destination offset equals current PID minus E start ID. That would also work at, at the end as well, yes. So. That and that. Okay, so if two insert count is zero, then we want to leave by doing the deallocate of the two insert data set to po EC result po ECS success. Otherwise, I need to do the, res uh, the resize. So that's going to be like up here. Okay. But it's not going to be that. It's going to be this dot. There'll be two, one, two of them, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, hold on. Let's do this.
let's say data set. I have a data set, which is the uh, destination pool equals the component pool, the current pool. Then New capacity equals standard max of p component pool stored data dot count plus uh, to insert if new if uh, destination pool dot capacity is less than new capacity, then I need to go through the, the process of creating the new one. So if not alloc data set um how would this work? Yeah, it would it would have to be the new capacity. Uh, P component pool data size, uh, the destination pool. If this fails, then I need to do again. I need to do both of these. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Otherwise, the destination pool has been overwritten with the new one. That'll include the capacity. That'll include the two pointers. The count is going to be the same as old, but I don't care about that right now. Do I? No. Okay. Otherwise, I need to also do, like, if p component pool inserted capacity is less than two insert count, then I need to replace that with three on a pool that uh, p put on pool p inserted offsets equals malloc size t star malloc to uh, insert count time size of size t okay if this is still null. That means it failed to allocate, which means I need to go through the this again. Sorry, not quite that. Otherwise, p quantum pool uh, inserted capacity equals. Uh, to insert count. And I actually know the size of this, so I know exactly how many. Inserted count is going to equal insert count. I know that already. Okay. So at this point, uh, p insert is going to equal the beginning. No, to insert data, to insert offsets dot. I, I wanted to go in reverse order. So plus, let me just double check that I'm not. Yeah, to insert offsets. Dot size uh, minus one to get the last valid one. So insert offset data const, uh, const p insert p n reverse insert. That equals that minus one beyond the end 
Otherwise, size teeth are P inserted also. This will equal same thing, P inserted offsets plus to insert count minus one. Last moved offset equals P on a pool store data dot count to the end. Yeah, because we're going in reverse order. So size P accumulated distance. Or shift distance, I should, yeah, something like that. Shift. Equals to insert count. That's how many we're shifting to the right. Yes. Mm, P insert, not equal, P and reverse insert. Uh, minus P insert. Uh, I need to skip if P insert uh, entity equals O invalid. Skip it. Otherwise, Is less than last move. So I'm, I'm so I need to move. I'm going into a place that already has an object. I need those guys to move right now. <sighs> Size e cons uh, source equals p insert destination offset. That's where it's starting. Size T cons destination offset equal P M no source offset plus shift distance. That's where it's going to end up to the right. Um, okay. count. Shift count. Number I'm going to shift. Const equals. Is it const? Yes. Last moved offset minus source offset. Move data. Destination pool. Uh, destination offsets. From stored data. Source offset. Shift count. Data size. So last moved. Full source. We moved one, so reduce the shift distance by one. We moved data. We move the two insert data around. So the destination pool destination the insert data pool set the insert for the source offset. One, we're only moving one, and it's the component pool data size. Okay, what's that? Great. That leaves star P inserted offset equals P inserted in P insert destination offset plus shift distance of however many to go. All right. So that just leaves like if that just leaves everything that may need to be shifted if we are in a different thing. So 
destination pool dot count equals three component pool stored plus two insert count. That should that should still be that. If destination pool dot p let's just say IDs not equal t component pool store data dot pids. So if the pointers don't match, that means that we are moving to a different thing. So we need to do the move data thing. If zero is less than the last move offset. So destination will be zero and the component pool store will also be zero. It will be the last moved up to the last moved offset item. And it will be the component pool data size. With all with all that, p component pool uh, store data equals destination pool. We need to deallocate the old. I just basically need to do this. Do that. Okay. Okay, so now I need to start adding in the other things. So I want to do some other items which are pretty basic. I'm going to need something like the expansion rate. Um, like that's the rate at which the regular pool will increase by when you run out of capacity. So like I want it to increase by, let's say, a thousand objects each time you hit the capacity. The uh, yeah, something like that. I also need, or rather, I want something that will. Let's say I want to set the, the the desired capacity. I want it to start, or in the next maintenance cycle, I want it to increase or be at least. You know, it's like reserve, right? You want it. I you know, only have two items, but I want to reserve it for twenty thousand because I know. I'm going to have 20,000. Oh, and that also brings up another one. Size T. Insert desired capacity. I know I'm going to have 20,000 brought in because I'm like loading from the file and there's like 20,000 objects. So I'm going to, I say, okay, I want to make sure every, the next time I run through the insert uh, call, I want it to be increased by tw to 20,000 instead of incre increasing by one or each time or, or something like that. Yeah, so I need those. Then I need the other basic function. So I need to uh, add pointers to the ID for the regular storage, for the IDs, for the data, and the same thing for the removed. So I'll, I'll, I'll get all that done offline because it's really basic stuff. It's really very, very droll. So I'll BRB with that and I'll also get some tests going before I come back. Make sure like it's actually working as I expect. And then I'll do stuff. So until then. Okay, so all yeah, that's finally all done. That took way too long. Uh, so I've got it basically done and ready to go. There were a few minor changes, such as I've added a destructor for a type, just in case like there, there's like leftover elements, like leftover, let's say a standard vector or something like that in some component types right now, rather than like have the, op have no option for dis deletion or having to put that onto some other item outside. What I've decided to do was add like this destructor, which is also passing uh, at creation. 
here, where she just takes in a void star, which is a pointer to the struct. And all that happens is like wherever data is destroyed. So like if we fail to insert it, we then just go through each of the, in this case, the skipped data and say, you know, call the destructor on that. Uh, same thing if it's skipped here, uh, especially things like if it's um, on the end, it's just going through destroying all the data, if it exists, if the destructor exists. And same thing on the maintenance cycle. Uh, I've also added, what else? Is there anything else really big? Not really. I think this is pretty much it. It's pretty basic. Um, so there's the original, the create, destroy, maintenance. Um, setting the expansion rate, getting the current size, getting the pointer to the regular stored IDs, getting to the component data, what's the total capacity, reserve a certain capacity on the next maintenance cycle, um, what's the insertion capacity right now, reserve insertion capacity on the next insert cycle. There's the insert again. Here's the number of inserted. Insert offset pointer, same as before. Uh, the remove. I changed these, didn't I? Um, the IDs, yeah. It should be entity again. Um, the number removed, removed entity ID pointer, removed component data pointer. And that's it. That's the entirety of the implementation. So, and of course, I've got tests for all of this. Oh, just way, way, way too many. Um, it's great. So the interesting thing to do here, though, would be to grab the old compiler. Or right, let me actually put the data in. Get source two. And insert this. So let's do that. Let's copy all that in and then copy all this in. Get the implementation for that. So this is going to be a bit of a pain because that, of course, none of these exist. So these are all gone. Can't do that. Um, Let's do that. Oh, no, no, I don't want to actually save that. Oh, is this? Oh, they implement, they, they've uh, got the VS Code thing in here. Nice. Uh, include standard dev, result set. I want to change that to like UN32 or something like that. Or I could just, I could just copy that in. Hold on. Result. Set, copy that, put it in there, great. Uh, type def, win32t to entity ID. I need to include, let's just say it's void star. Or no, I don't even need to do that, hold on. Copy this, copy that. Put that at the top. So this is going to be as close as possible to the end result. Entity ID. Equals that. I need to include. Standard int for the uh, UN32. Or yeah, it's the other way around, is it? Okay, great. That takes us down to here. That was the header. That's fine algorithm that's I don't I have it in here somewhere um <laughs> copy this into here or so result.h is going to become this I want to just say it's null like that so what's going on here include result equals move I ended that really 
Uh, I wasn't aware of that. Standard move. Where is that coming in from? Utility. And I need this here, up here, just about like that. Don't quite do that. Data set, that brings me down to here, unique last. It's not in the namespace like that anymore. Need to equals zero. Equals zero. It's going on down here. Yeah. Um, ambiguous symbol. Ambiguous. What is it? Because of this? Mm, a little bit. Come on, MSVC, you gotta help me with this. Ambiguous symbol. What do you mean? It's declared like. Oh, because it's in an empty namespace. Okay, hold on. Uh, okay, let's take it out of the empty namespace and just say, hey, you know. The empty namespace is this stuff. That's better. Uh, this is now gone, so it's now that. Yes, come on, come on. Let me do this as a... That? Yes, 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 yes. Let's go on down here. Clear that. We're not quite clear of that. Clear those, they go away. Okay, there we go. Finally, uh, so the first one was this. So let me just kind of like do, 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 do this. When there was only one, let's say, GCC 1400 versus GCC, probably about the same, 1300. Very close. Very, very close. Uh, Clang. Tw uh, 2000 versus 1500. Okay, that's actually quite a bit better. MSVC... 1921 to 1500. Wow, okay. In my work, I managed to make it uh, quite a bit shorter. shorter. And, of course, unlike uh, the first implementation, this will not increase in size with uh, different types. 
uh, rather, hold on, unsigned int. So this doubles. You know, it's a GCC 2500. So it's not it's not a, a true doubling, but like it's 2500 versus 1300. Clang, uh, 1400 versus probably like 3800. And MSVC, 36 200 to 1500. Like clearly, especially like as there's more and more of these, like and more and more duplications of what is almost the exact same thing. Whereas what I'm just doing here is just, you know, I'm storing one extra or four, sorry, no, eight, eight or extra bytes for the data type size. And I'm just passing it in to a couple of generic functions. That's way like that. This impl implementation is going to fit, is going to be far more likely to A, fit in the cache and B, be in the cache uh, of a CPU when uh, you need to run any of these calls. Huh. Uh, well, I have no idea what this is about, but okay. So I think I would actually call that a success. So now what I would have to do is do implementation changes for... Do I have time to do that? Maybe. Let me check. No, not really. I don't really have enough time. I would try to... Move, uh, shift these things over, perhaps, uh, into a new into the new system. But I think, I mean, well, this is yeah, because this is a great improvement in my mind. So until next time, cheers. <laughs>